All right, so welcome to Excellence in Analytics. This is Don Reeby, CEO and founder, and I'm more than happy to be sharing a very special guest with us today who's gonna be talking about all about hormones, right? How to balance our hormones, how to recognize hormonal imbalance, how to shift our habits so that we have a better hormonal balance, which leads to less stress, to you know, just a healthier, happier way of being. So I'm gonna go ahead and load her on in here, Dr. Sam Graber. I'm gonna get her on in here. All right, I think I invited you. you on. <laughs> Hopefully it all works. It looks like I might be adding her in. And I gotta tell you, I'm just blown away with Dr. Graber and all the work that she does for individuals. Now here, <laughs> excuse me, in fire, EMS, law enforcement environments, you know, our stress hormones are often very much out of whack, right? We're reactive. We are unable to be proactive because we're constantly putting out fires, right? And first responders know exactly what I'm talking about. Dispatchers, you know, you're listening to those phone calls and you need to react right away, right? Here we go. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, fantastic. We have you on in here. I'm just gonna, whoops, gonna go ahead and load this up on this end. All right, everyone should be able to All see All right. <laughs> welcome, welcome. We're going to give you a minute. To Thank you. I'm getting minutes. feedback, so let me see here. All right. And you, your hand is right in front of your face. <laughs> yeah. It's, I'm trying to not get the feedback. So sorry. All right. Welcome. Hold on one second. Okay, and so while she's getting settled over there, we're just going to go ahead and welcome all of you who are joining in on um, you know, our Excellence in Analytics community, yeah, within our community, to really understand our hormones, understand the changes that happen in our yeah. hormones, understand how we can actually um, make improvements to our everyday lifestyles through looking at our hormones. And so we have a very special guest here today, Dr. Sam Graver. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank hey, you so hey. Here. hi, thank you. Can you hear me okay, Dawn? Yes, ma'am. I sure Okay, can. perfect. Perfect. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So um, Dr. Graber and I met in a group uh, for women entrepreneurs called Advance. It's a wonderful collaboration, uh, cl multiple collaborations, right? And so yes. we're really looking mm -hmm. to see how we can support each other. And so um, Sam's over here helping us today. And I'm so thankful for you for being here. Thank you. Me too. And sorry for the technical stuff. I don't usually do Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn a lot, mm -hmm. just not much on Facebook. So sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Well, you, I'll have to figure out LinkedIn because I don't know that angle. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll do one on LinkedIn on, on my end and, and um, meet up again there. I would love that. I love it. Sounds awesome. Cool. So uh, we're going to get into the whole hormone thing. We're going to tap your brain. We're going to sure. learn about all the things that we need to know to really balance our hormones and, and, and move into different phases of our life with ease and calmness. But before we go there, yeah. I have to say, um, you know, when I saw your, your, your heading that said future tiny home dweller on a regenerative <laughs> farm collective, I fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, that is my that is my goal. That is a my mission. That will absolutely happen. You can come visit anytime. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I get the vision. I have the same vision yeah. to be operating in a sustainable way, yes. regenerating the earth, and providing yes. opportunities for beyond sixty years from now. I know. Isn't that startling when you hear this? Ten, you know, every ten years, I'll say it's one more generation and sixty more crops. That's crazy. It is. Crazy. And our food is so important and, you know, for everything, not only our fuel, but even our hormones. So well, it all fits in. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Especially our hormones. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I think both of us deeply value really uh, keeping our, our bodies, our homes, our environments clean. And I don't, I don't think there's always that connection between, um, you know, hormones and earth and yep. quality um, nutrition and quality products and quality environments around us. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right on. And I've been following, you know, seeing the, some of the stuff you post about making sure you're eating real food. And, and that's definitely speaking my language, making sure we're getting good healing fats so that we're actually building the hormones that we're trying to have in our body, right? Instead of just going to some external source. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting back, because we are going to dig into the hormone piece, but getting back sure. to the soil regeneration, um, I just, in, if you live, 
you should check with your communities. Um, my community has a compost program where they come and they pick up the compost, food that oh, nice. we a bucket. Uh -huh. um, only 5% of food, you know, is composted, right? And so wow. that's a yeah. lot of negativity in our, in our environment. So this group called Grow Nashua, um, they actually show up at the house and they take the, the scraps, right? Mm -hmm. And they turn it into compost and then they deliver a bunch of fresh, beautiful soil um, oh. from April, May. Nice. So you can put that all in your garden. It's it's your way of getting it recycled. Oh, that is such a great program. We don't have anything here where I'm at in Pensacola, but some of the, the neighbors will do that with each other. Got it. Oh, that's great. So yeah. welcome, welcome here. And um, I know Thank you. You ha you're a doctor, you're a chiropractor for many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, dealt with people who have struggling, who've been struggling with their hormones. Tell us a little bit about how that got started for you, why the focus on hormones. Sure. Uh, well, I think a lot of the, the focus has turned because I've been in perimenopause for a while. And just to let people know what perimenopause is, it's that period of 10 to 15-ish years before we hit the menopause, which is an event. And menopause is when we've gone 365 days without a period or with anything that resembles a period. So it's a, it's a really kind of a, a challenging time for folks. Um, and as I was going through it myself, you know, I'm a seasoned doctor. I've been coaching people and, and working in that, in that field for a long time with nutrition and supplements. And I was really unprepared myself for this, this entire experience. And then the more and more I researched, the more it came full circle that stress is really the, the foundation for our, our hormones going wonky, and then plus our food. Yeah, but it all fits together. And it, it does. Fits. And so many people listening to this, uh, you know, we, we serve the first responder community. So mm -hmm. we have the fire folks, um, you know, EMS folks, those doctors who are at the hospitals with the yes. 911 calls, and law enforcement, but um, specifically the law enforcement folks who are behind the scenes, right? And yes. so these are okay. your forensic analysts, your financial analysts, your tra human trafficking folks. <laughs> they don't human traffic. They study yeah. human trafficking. <laughs> sure, yes, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. I know it's and yeah. so um, often these folks think, oh, the other person's stress is worse than mine, right? Because I'm just, just behind the scenes. What do you have to say to some of those people who say, my stress level isn't as hard as somebody else's? That is, that is a tough one. And I hear that very often because people will say, I've got it so good. Why, why would, you know, I've, I've seen real trauma, quote unquote, real trauma. Your body doesn't know the difference. If, you're, if your psyche and your heart and your emotions have experienced stress, your body stores that. And your body doesn't have a calculator for your stress versus somebody else everybody's experience is their own and it is as real as anything out there and whether we experience the stressful event ourselves or it's through a secondary trauma or through us observing or being around others who've been in that kind of traumatic situation we still absorb that our mm -hmm. brain will still have those visions and you know even when you're reading a report and you think oh my goodness and but it's going in in your brain and your brain does not have that distinctive difference between real and perceived. And your stress response is the same either way. It's so fun. It's so wild, right? Because mm -hmm. I, all the, exactly what you're saying all the time, maybe an analyst or an analyst supervisor oh, yeah. be, or chief, right? Um, mm -hmm. He or she is reading reports and it's like, oh, burglary, oh, robbery, oh, rape. And they're desensitized in a sense because mm -hmm. it's just another, another survival. Right, but then when they look at the photos or they're doing some of the internal investigations, all of a sudden they're like, Oof. Mm -hmm. and it <laughs> compounds. You know, it, it's like this one layered on this one, layered on this one. Mm -hmm. Plus, I mean, we have our own lives where things happen. We might have a, a trauma, we might have an accident, we may go through a breakup of a, a family, or you know, whatever it may be. That all fits in. Yes, really yes. unrest was really big for mm -hmm. this community. We had folks who couldn't go running in their neighborhoods, right? Mm -hmm, sure. So, so you talked about perimenopause being 10 to 15 years before 
actual menopause. So mm -hmm. what age around would be menopause and what would be the perimenopause age? Sure. Um, according to the literature, it's 51 is the average age of menopause. So look in mid 30s is often when things will happen. Now that's your, your typical, what's called a, a normal progression of menopause. But there are many women who go into early menopause because of medications, stress, mm -hmm. dietary things can happen. Um, if they might be having polycystic ovarian syndrome, there's a bunch of different things that can uh, bring this on a little earlier, or at least the symptoms that mimic what we go through in perimenopause. So what are those symptoms? What are the things that we should be really looking, I mean, I'm, I'm in my mid 40s, right? So what are the things that I should be looking for? Michelle says that she's in her mid 30s. What sure. are the things that we should be looking for that is gonna, you know, say to us, hmm, this might, this might be something you wanna dig deeper in. Sure, the, the most common thing is a change in our periods. So what does that mean? Like if they're more frequent, less frequent, more bleeding, heavier bleeding, more cramping, or the opposite, less of all those things. And all of a sudden you think, huh, there's, there's been a bit of a shift. And that often indicates that estrogen and progesterone are no longer balancing each other. Really, it's estrogen's the wild child, so she's going, she's going rogue, and progesterone's like, oh, wait, hold on, <laughs> let me try to get you. And yep. progesterone can't keep up with her. So mm -hmm. it becomes this, this imbalance, and it happens gradually. And then once it hits this tipping point, then it's like, whew, it's a yes. quick dis disrupt. So what about the folks who have the copper IDs, uh, IUDs rather, or mm -hmm. use uh, birth control, hormonal stimulant, stimulants or uh, medication? What about those? Sure. Uh, do they experience it the same way? Uh, everyone's different no matter what, like as we, as we know about the body. Um, and some people, they slide right through it, no big deal. Others, it everything comes back <laughs> to literally haunt them, they feel in a way. Mm -hmm. But some of that is mindset oriented. You know, we've been often taught this, this kind of ill view of what youth is and you know, youth is the ultimate and all these sayings we have, youth is wasted on the young, yada, yada, yada. We are not taught, especially as women, to embrace this beautiful transition we get to go through. And I really don't think that nature made a mistake here. I don't think, you know, the design went, okay, well, we're just, you know, going to blow it all after menopause. Like, mm -hmm. I think there's a very natural reason why all of a sudden we're not making as much of the progesterone. Why estrogen is changing from, there's three different types of estrogen. So we switch from that type two to more of a type three and type one. Mm -hmm. There's difference there, different parts of our brain. So it, it all, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's a large conglomeration of symptoms that people will experience. Mm -hmm. um, there's supposedly 34 of them. I don't know. I don't buy into a lot of that stuff. You know, <laughs> I think each of us just kind of knows something's different. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, many women will experience being diagnosed with a mental health disorder or some sort of situation when I often think we're having a very healthy response to a very unhealthy stimulus. Yeah. So, you know, we, uh, we work with uh, uh, men and women who come mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. great anxiety, great stress when they come to us. And, um, and, and so they're really working to alleviate that stress and they're like, what's wrong with me? Um, yes. You know, most of the people are is simultaneously in therapy or trying to figure out what's wrong with me. And so yes. you're suggesting that really there's nothing wrong. It's this beautiful process and there's a couple of key things that you can do to really reduce the negatives and increase the positives. Yeah, so yeah, when we're looking at these major life transitions mm -hmm. and then definitely when, when looking at anxiety or those anxious sort of uh, triggers that are, that are occurring, sometimes there's things we can't control. You know, we can't control the environment in many cases and in the space that you all are working it's very difficult to to interrupt a you know a crime. I mean, what do you, what else are you going to do? You have to go through the whole process. But there are certain ways that we can you know make sure that ourselves are doing well, and trying to mitigate the stressors. The ones that we have the most control over are what we eat, the mm -hmm. chemical kinds of stresses. You know, because all of those stressors add up. You know, it's so true. I actually just had an experience yesterday, um, Sam, with my daughter, who's 11. Mm -hmm. She's been having some back issues, and she went to the doctors, 
and um, mm -hmm. I, I belong to, I have my own holistic doctor, but she has a traditional doctor. And so we went to her traditional doctor and they said, we, you, she needs to be on 300 milligrams of ibuprofen three times a day. And for the, wow. next, day, for the next 10 days. And okay. I said, um, and, and so my daughter was like, well, the doctor said, and what I tried to show her was, well, that's one piece of mm -hmm. the pie that needs to be filled before you make a decision about your body. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. um, be, because I see traditional doctors often prescribing and, you know, just not just put some chemicals in your body. It'll be fine later on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so yeah. what does that do? What does chronic use of, um, hormonal or, or medications that disrupt hormones, um, chemicals in the environment, food that has hormones in it and, and other chemicals, what does that do to the body itself? Whew, I could write a dissertation on that. <laughs> um, I, I think we have to kind of look at, at things that are parenternal or meaning that they're, they're from the outside in. Mm -hmm. So if you're taking a pill to try to do something that your body is fully capable of doing, but we're just not giving the body those raw materials it needs to build and produce its own, take yes. hormones. So if we're, if we're taking on too many hormones in our food, whether it be animals or hormone disrupting things that are in our plant foods or the items that we use on our skin, yes. um, all of those things are cleaning products. They have some things in them called en uh, endocrine disruptors, which I, I know you're very familiar with that term. And um, I just actually wrote one of my blogs, which if people want to kind of plug into that conversation, find me on LinkedIn um, or at drsamgraber.com. I write prolifically on these these topics, um, and that's what always makes it hard to do these these lives and, and kind of get into anything really on a deep level. But as far as what you're asking, um, I would really look at getting as close to nature as possible. Mm -hmm. Something I'll often say to people is when you're eating something, does it look like it looked like when it was on the plant or in the ground or on the animal or the fish, you know, and how long has it been since that animal or that plant was alive, was plugged into its life source, you know, and then what was done to the food after it became food. Well, you bring up so many good points because I don't mm -hmm. think question the food uh, in nourishing their bodies enough. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have a, a new free guide out over in our Dawn Reby, uh, Dawn Reby .com. It's called Mastering a Holistic Health Routine, and it mm -hmm. talks about these very things. And, and of course, Dr. Bra Graver, I would love for you all to, to follow her um, on LinkedIn and some of those um, po it's just podcasts and some of those mm -hmm. blogs to really dive deep into, you know, Right, right now it's surface, right? But to dive deep into different issues, and mm -hmm. it's so important to be involved and, and to think about. And so, um, you know, let's let's start with the food piece, and then we'll go on to the sure. what's in your environment piece and some other components. Okay. So the, the food piece, uh, you know, I see so many people saying, "Oh, I'm going to eat better," and they think a head of lettuce is 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 like eating better, um, sure. or they they think that. Um, it's this diet or low fat or something on it that mm -hmm. is better for them. You're really suggesting, which is part of our core value system here, is stick to the, the, the closest you can get to earth in real food, the better, right? Yes. Um, yes. And so, so if someone says, you know, I want to start eating healthier, where do you point them? What do they start doing? What are the key, like, top two things or three things that you say to them? Here's what to pay attention to. Sure. The first thing I, I really recommend to people is to switch out your meat sources. Now, if someone doesn't eat meat, I often counsel and talk with them, like, why, why, why aren't you eating meat? Is it you can't digest it? Is it for animal rights? Is it for a perception that it's healthier not to eat man, animal products? Because really, the science does not back that up. But, it, you know, I, I honor people's choices, and I will always honor people's choices and religious choices, whether, whatever it may be. So I look at those things. What are your protein sources? Mm -hmm. And is it something that is highly processed? Because chances are the availability of those amino acids from your protein will be very, very minimal. Mm -hmm. So also we want to look and make sure they've got enough stomach acid so they can be digesting their, their protein. Yeah. Um, looking at the source there, right? So that's first. And then switching out all those crappy seed oils. Mm -hmm. I just wrote extensively about that this week. They're mm -hmm. not they're not vegetable oils. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll do the air quotes like vegetable oils. <laughs> no vegetables in there, y'all. No yes. vegetables. <laughs> so, and so the, yeah. 
stick with avocado oil, stick with um, organic, whole um, olive oil, that kind of thing is what you're saying? Um, if you're using oils, I, I look at more if it's, if it's solid at room temperature, so your coconut, virgin coconut oil, items that are from, um, a, that are sourced from a place that's not depleting our planet and not, you know, tearing down our, our forest. Yeah. Uh, so I look at those things, like everything's so cyclical. Mm -hmm. And there are times when I kind of get a little overwhelmed by it all. And I think, my God, what are you going to, like, you can't even eat. You eat and whatever you're eating is disrupting the world or it's so <laughs> heavily processed mm -hmm. that it's like it weighs on you, you know, so it, it does become those some basics that you can do eating food. If you go to, um, if you're lucky, like a, uh, sorry about some of oh. my phone just freaked out, you're good, but you're if good. you, are you getting feedback now? No, nope, you're good. You're wonderful. Okay. I think it's just on my end. Okay, so I'll try to move past that. <laughs> Let me see. Hold on. Sorry. Um, while she's while she's working on some of the audio piece, you know, we're thinking that's we're, better. We're talking about um, you know eliminating the process piece. I think a lot of people. Congratulations! A bunch of you are saying I'm I'm going eating more plant based. I'm doing more vegetables in my diet. Mm -hmm. I have more in my lifestyle. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Erica says it's overwhelming, and so. You know, when we think about the shifts, they just have to start as simple. And, and so Dr. Graber is saying some of the things to think about is less processed foods. Like start there, less mm -hmm. processed foods. And, and kind of this, um, you know, opposite end of less is more, right? So more whole foods, mm -hmm. <laughs> more yes. nutrient-rich foods, um, and more foods that come from a sustainable resource. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, bringing... bringing um, vegetables or fruit when it's plucked too early across the country or to another world. I mean, really, we're, we're our carbon footprint is greater. <laughs> oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> we're, we're not getting the full nutrients. And so one of the things that I'm exploring, I'm really excited about exploring is um, how to get more efficient and sufficient in um, mm -hmm. in my own grows, right? And starting to play with nice. the seeds and nutrition. Um, Yes, Erica and Michelle are saying it's a bit overwhelming. And here's the thing: we start off small. Like, yeah. say to ourselves, "I'm, you know, I'm going to have three days this week with um, whole foods. Three days of whole foods, right? So at all day long, you're looking for whole foods, things that like come out of the earth, right? So sweet potatoes and fruit and um, some greens, heavy greens. And Dr. Graber also pointed to. Uh, nutrients, right? Like ensure mm -hmm. that you're eating nutrients and not just all lettuce, that you're actually kind of incorporating in the rainbow of other nutrients that are going to support you and your body. And do you coach, um, Dr. Greg, do you coach people through this process or what's the service that you provide for people who want to start a cleaner lifestyle? Yeah, um, I used to do one-on-one -on -one coaching and then I kind of maxed out on how many people I could help and I felt like I was not impacting enough. Then I moved to more of a group coaching, and now I have a, a membership and group group coaching platform that is all all online. And then we do once a week where we do Q and A calls, and I'm just kicking that off. So I, I feel like now I'm finally going to be able to gain some traction and help more people. So everything we do is is through an online portal, and people have a you know a list of here's where you start. If you're having these issues, you want to really focus here. I go through yep. um, primarily nutritional ketosis is something that I really recommend for helping cleanse the cells and then becoming metabolically flexible is really the ultimate goal so that you yeah. can be eating carbohydrates and eating proteins and good healing fats that are mm -hmm. actually helping make a better cell versus just something to you know increase our energy. So it's, it's exactly. sort of recycling and helping the body holistically. And so the same concepts that you have in the real world around regenerative mm -hmm. soiling and, and mm -hmm. living are really about the body. How do we get the body to feel optimized and to be optimized long term? What are the key things that right. we need to do? And yeah. so, um, you know, I, I value the work that you bring. Um, it's, it's what we do here as well as really help people keep it simple and progress mm -hmm. incrementally as they, as they go. And so the topic that we're talking about today, if you're just hopping on right now, is the, the things in life, right? The food, the environment, the products that you use, how they can really come into your world and disrupt your hormones yes. and result in 
um, your body poorly reacting, right? Uh, overly stressed, maybe sickness, illness. And what I love, Sam, is that we talk about, there's not like a pill that you're asking people to take. You're simply there saying, <laughs> get more connected to earth. Like get more connected to real food, real products. Uh, do you have a product line or is it just referral at this point to products that you enjoy? Yeah, I, I really, I'm just predominantly food, food based. So I, I really do that and then helping people sleep better, work on, on mindfulness and be more mindful throughout the day versus just a practice. Yeah. Um, and just helping them find what works for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to have a, a saying in, in my practice, people would come in and be like, oh, Dr. Sam, you helped me so much. You saved my life, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I do not want the credit because I don't want the blame. Yeah. And that helps me. <laughs> I, I'm looking to create independent human beings mm -hmm. yes. who are, are more informed themselves, making decisions for themselves getting more in tune with their body so they know when something's off before it's like completely off the rails. Yes. And the more you get in tune and, and kind of check in and with, you know, your body, your, your mind, your spirit, the more you do that, the more familiar you become to you. And it's, it's kind of this time in midlife where another reason I focus here is we've spent so much of our life taking care of other people. And in your fields with all of you who are watching or listening, you are constantly focused on the outside and rightfully so the work you do is just incredibly critical and our society could not function without you. The challenge is many of the people that I've worked with over the years and when I was in the human trafficking space or anti-human trafficking space helping victims and, and survivors and those who are out there working um, to find them and help them, there is just such an accumulation of those issues and, and the mental and the spiritual uh, damage that occurs, the one thing we can really control is what we eat and what we drink and how often we eat and how often we fast. Yeah. And fasting is not a bad word when done appropriately and done well. You know, when your body is optimized nutritionally, it can fast and then it has a chance to go in and recycle some of that stuff that's just sitting there. You yeah. know, like we wouldn't let it accumulate in our house. Don't exactly. let it accumulate in your body. Exactly. And, and that, you know, that brings us to um, these topics of what we put in our body and what, what it actually does for that. Like specifically, we put in m &Ms. We put in sugar. Sugar, yeah. sugar, sugar is like the, the, like it just needs to be cut out. It just needs to be done. It needs to yes. be on. <laughs> yeah. Once you've, I've read multiple books on sugar and mm -hmm. um, you know, the imbalance that it creates in your metabolism, your hormones and disease. Sure. Eats, cancers and illnesses and you know and so I mean if once you fully understand what sugar does to your body yeah. short and long term like you literally will never have sugar again <laughs> absolutely and then you realize it is in everything that's processed yeah. same with those seed oils like you literally cannot find something that has more than two or three ingredients that's in a package mm -hmm. that is not processed with an oil or some sort of form of sugar Mm -hmm. And the fake sugars, forget those two. Like there's just literally nothing that right. is decent to your body. And the cleaner you are in your consumption of food, the better yeah. you're gonna optimize, the better you're gonna operate, the better you're gonna deal with stress. You know, we, we tell our officers all the time, be proactive, right? But in a sense, so we give them, here's how it works in analytics. We say, officers, use our information to drive your decision, where you go and where you develop strategy. And, um, and then you see the analysts sometimes getting frustrated because that officer is just reacting call to call. And we, we walk around and we say, chief, you know, you've got to do this. You've got to do this. But then I turn around and say, we're hypocrites because we're saying that mm. everyone else needs to be proactive. But in our health, we're reactive. We're sure. walking by and grabbing the bowl of, of M&Ms or um, eating the bag of chips that we don't realize has, you know, five, 10 grams of added sugar in it, never mind sure. all the processed stuff. And so being proactive yeah. in our own lives is critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I often recommend to people to, to do batch cooking. So it's like, you know, just cook a bunch of good real food on the weekend or whatever your days are that you can do that and then package it up, not in plastic. If you're gonna reheat it at the office, um, please do that in glass or yeah. on, you know, porcelain. Cause, Let's pause yeah. there for one second. So I want you to help them understand why. Why no yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. The, the plastic is uh, leaching out those endocrine disruptors. Mm -hmm. So those are those things that are going to, um, uh, I'm getting feedback. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. Yeah. I love technology, but I don't love technology. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, so let me just see if I can get rid of that. Uh, but the, the plastics are going to be leaching off things that um, mimic the estrogens in our system. Yes. So then they're going to attach onto the cells. Mm -hmm. And then that is then going to increase the amount of estrogen in our system, yes. which creates an estrogen dominant sort of environment. Yes. And too much estrogen is no bueno. No es bueno. That's right. No es bueno. <laughs> so, if you're to, so if you're listening to this right now, and I see um, Michelle said Chef Lauren taught us that. So we, we actually hired a, a, a wellness coach, um, a wellness chef, rather, to come, a whole health chef to come into our private coaching group and teach uh, multiple times. Nice. Around. Yeah, so that our folks can really get their hands into real food, right? So thank you for that, Michelle. Um, Erica, you passed a little bit morning and then you then you become starving yeah, yeah. so the, 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 the process of fasting has to be done intentionally and has to be done in a way that really sati satiates you with yes. nutritious food and yeah. not not just space like really that it has to be intention behind it and so what you consume at the end or yeah at the end of your fast is just as important as not fasting as fasting rather so but if, if folks are listening to this and you're saying, okay, you've talked about a lot of stuff, I need some action steps right now. We're saying number one, well, one one of the things, get rid of your plastics, go get rid of the plastic and get some glass, it's better for the environment too, mm -hmm. it's better for you, right? So yes. Get some glass and, and, and second, meal prep, you know, as much as you can just to get as close to the uh, uh, earth-based diet versus yep. things out of a plastic bag, right? Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so looking at your, your meats, real meat, and the kind of the rule is, does whatever you're eating look like it did when it was yes. in the night, in nature? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So if it's stuffed with a bunch of cheese, it probably didn't look like that in nature. <laughs> probably not. I'm sure it tastes really good, just like broccoli, but no. <laughs> no not like that. Yeah. And it depends how unhealthy someone is. You know, if they're, if they're eating predominantly real food now, and they're able to just shift a couple of those decisions, it would be looking at regeneratively raised or non-GMO, non, -GMO, non um, you know, no antibiotics, yep. no extra sauces on your food, make your own sauces. Mm -hmm. You know, use butter. Mm -hmm. I love butter. <laughs> use real food. You're saying mm -hmm. real food and make your own stuff. And you know, this, since COVID has been around, I've been doing a lot of food prep and really, you know, uh, just, a better a, a deeper interest in that and i don't want to go out now we're flying out to arizona yeah. and we're like on the way from the airport to the to the house that we're renting we're uh -huh. stopping at the grocery store and buying stuff that we can prepare good um, idea i just want to fuel my body i don't want to take the chance of having something short or long term really sure. really impact yeah us. Well, I think you, you just nailed it there where it's about fueling your body, helping rebuild the cells. You know, our protein is what creates our structure. Mm -hmm. We've chosen to make food a, an entertainment mm -hmm. or a placating or something to help us emotionally. Mm -hmm. Food is food. Food is for nutrients. Yes. It's not for all that other stuff. Exactly. <laughs> when you really think about it. So um, I'll share a little bit about myself because I think some people mm -hmm. have it here. I have a thyroid issue in the last several years. I've been on um, thyroid medication and okay. um, looking to taper off, working with a holistic doctor to take, taper off. And so one of the things that she says, because she knows I also believe in this earth-based real food um, con uh, healing concept, she, she says Brazil nuts are high in selenium. So you need selenium for your thyroid. So let's get that you know um, functioning better for you. I have mm -hmm. this iodine, you know, you'll find it in seaweed and you'll find it in kelp and, and different kinds um, uh, of different seaweeds, right? Sure. And, mm -hmm. and so when I, when I hear the information, I'm like, wow, this thyroid challenge that I'm having, I can eat this food, I can eat that food, I can bring these things into my day-to-day -day diet that maybe I didn't think about before and be nourishing and be optimizing. There you go. Um, you know, looking at how to 
adaptogens as well, looking at how to really equalize those hormones. Uh, so, uh, you know, and, and I have a ton of resources. I know you do, you do more suggesting, and I encourage folks to follow, um, follow the blogs, follow the podcast, follow on LinkedIn, Dr. Graber. She does a beautiful job of really defining the differences in a lot of these little nuances that we're talking about here in kind of Thank this you. level. And so, and of course, her group coaching and her group um, session, uh, is it an eight-week session or a 10-week session? Uh, no, actually, I've, I've built this in to be more of a, of a modular kind of master classes. We do one a month. One, uh, a month. one month, it's, yeah, one a month, it's on metabolism or female hormones. Um, we do one on the thyroid, the adrenals, mm -hmm. autoimmunity, really take the entire holistic health uh, like the whole ecosystem and break it down over a year so yeah. people can make those changes. This month, let's say we focus on thyroid. Yep. Make those changes, get your blood work done, understand what it all means, yes. and then go to the next month and keep what we did last month and then yep. add this new thing. And so over, a, yeah, over the time span of one year, they can completely change the way their body relates to everything. I love that. I love that it's yeah. in a small, little, digestible. Yes. <laughs> no pun intended. No <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> and you know, right. because I don't think people think, you know, just taking that thyroid example, you mentioned the tests. When I originally was getting my tests, I didn't know that there was a difference between T3 and 4 and a conversion <laughs> difference and so forth. And so that information that you all get from Dr. Sam is going to be instrumental in creating these short term changes. So that, uh, I'm sorry, uh, um, instrumental or, or uh, micro, what am I looking for? What's a month? Yeah, the incremental, <laughs> yeah, where they just kind of, you know, little, and it's little things because what I've noticed, you know, doing this for so long is people will come in and they'll say, all right, how do I optimize my health? And I tell them, okay, well, how long has it taken, number one, how long has it taken to get to the situation you are now? And then if it's taken years, we're not going to correct that in an eight week challenge or you know, one bottle of some miracle supplement you think you just bought. It's all about the little things we do every day and the things we don't do. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're mm -hmm. both very, very important. And when it comes to thyroid, you know, your thyroid competes with your adrenals. When you think of the, hypo, you know, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, yeah. it's gonna predominate your cortisol over yes. your thyroid every day, all yes. day long. <laughs> yes, it all started out with the adrenal fatigue, Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so for those of you who are in our RG programs, any in our coaching programs, I, I'm pleased to announce that Dr. Sam will be joining us privately next month to specifically address the challenges yeah. that our team is having. Um, another okay. great benefit from being part of our community and really t taking these bites, these bites. We're just going to create more puns. We'll today. just do all the puns, all of them. <laughs> Take these bites out of yeah. know, really um, incremental incremental changes. Uh, yes, Erica's excited about that. Yeah, and so oh, you're good. gonna have full access to Dr. Sam. You're gonna be able to ask questions. Yep. Uh, so whether you um, are part of the I R G program, our Rising Genius program, you can certainly reach out to me, and I can let you know how to get linked into that, so that you can get connected not only to um, Dr. Sam but to all the resources that we offer. And if this is an area of growth for you in particular where you're just like, hey, I've been learning about this for a while, I just need to find some actual products. If you go to excellenceinanalytics.com, there's a recommendation tab there where I, I share some of the products that I love that are, that are toxic free. Good, yeah. You can also go to the EWG, I think it is website. That's um, it, mm -hmm. Where you can start to look at maybe some products that you have in your own cabinet and get a sense to see um, aside from the food piece, maybe some shampoos, conditioners, and, and uh, soaps and things of that nature, plug them into the EWG website and just get a sense of how much toxicity is around you in your home that might be disrupting your hormones. Uh, and if you want even more in-depth work with this, reach out to Dr. Sam Graber independently and, and get hooked into her program um, that there's multiple tiers of it, but the, certainly the membership program that would really be a small thing that you do once a month to really work on, on yourself, right? Um, yeah. Michelle added yeah. you to the resources. 
Yes, thank you. I appreciate I appreciate that, Michelle. Uh, so awesome. the work that Sam down, does is amazing and wonderful. Um, we can really, like you said in the beginning, transition folks through. I didn't realize it was ten to fifteen years, right? Mm -hmm. The real yeah. parent model, uh, uh, um, parent ma. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting my words mixed up right now. No, it's. Um, it's, it's I do that often to get all excited and it's like there's just so so much to share and I think it's like you're saying where it's it's just kind of looking at something and saying okay what can I what can I do about this what can I learn and then take action on right yes mm -hmm. yeah. exactly we are super big on action here if you've spent mm -hmm. the last 30 minutes with us or whatever amount of time you've been here and you haven't walked away with one action step um, we encourage you to write something down right now and it could be throw away my plastics and, and replace them with glass. It yeah. could be take a look at my meat and see the source of them. Um, it could be, you know, reach out to Sam, check out her website, and really see that there's some of the blogs or, or podcasts that align with some of the learning and growth that you're doing right now. So write something down. Go to the recommendations page of our website and grab some products that are toxin free and chemical free and can really actually support you. There you go. Write something down right now that you are going to do to make change and joy in your world because you deserve it. So I just want to thank you so much, Dr. Sam Graber, for being here with us today. You're welcome. Generously giving your time and your insight. Um, I think this is not something that's spoken a lot about, in particularly for law enforcement women, because it's kind of like, hush, hush, you have no problems, right? Right. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're on the clock. You have no body, mind, spirit. You are merely doing the things, which, you know, it, it's up to us to be our own best advocate. So I love that people are plugged into your network, talking about the things that we just don't talk about, which is, you know, it, it, we, we have to be talking about it. No one's going to do it for us. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I love it. Everything is in such alignment right here. I feel really connected to you and your way of thinking and the service that you provide to other people. So. Thank you for being here. You're Thank welcome. you for the work that you do and uh, for, for just being so generous with your skills and talents. I appreciate you. Awesome. Thank you, Dawn. I appreciate it. I look forward to next time and another time um, where we can keep collaborating. Thank you for that. All right, you guys. We'll see you all next week. Thank you again.